welcome to this episode of the Zoom Room Sessions as part of our Thriving Tribe project. I'm David Francis Moore and this is my colleague. Juliette Harvey. <laughs> and today we are joined by Andrea Fitzpatrick, who is the project manager for Art and Science at Quirum, which is the SFI Research Centre for Medical Devices. Andrea, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Oh, thanks for asking me. It's great to be here. Thank you. Really difficult question to answer. Um, I suppose if I was to put it in one sentence, I would say I'm a sometime artist, but an art manager and curator. So the things which motivate me in my practice are um, the exciting things that you find in overlapping practices, um, working with artists, who will step outside of their frame of reference and their comfort zone and work with uh, researchers and also finding researchers who will do the same so that they can find this common ground, but also find a new ground where they can, uh, I suppose, create, uh, uh, they can create a new language so that they can understand each other. But not only that, they need, since we work with communities in with our art and science projects, we need for them to communicate what they are doing um, to communities. We, we move in different spaces um, in the sense that it depends on the artist uh, we are working with, but, but also um, at the start of the project, we have uh, defined an area within the community which is going to be a space, a final resting space for the artwork which is created between the artists, the scientists and the community. Um, so our artists will work uh, within the lab also, so they will be in looking at experiments and they will be uh, going into this world which is really exciting um, and a, a space which uh, is usually not open to artists and to be honest in the future I don't know what that is going to look like um, in order for artists to actually come into the labs um, and also they they get to they gain entry to other spaces which usually you, you can't is absolutely essential in what we do um, but it depends on how you define collaboration um, because uh, in a sense the artist and the researchers the scientists are not actually they're not collaborating in the sense that they're making work together but however the fact that um, the artist comes in and finds out more about what the researcher is doing and actually in a sense changes the perspective for the researcher because often the researcher will, uh, after spending like a period of time with the artist, like they could spend several weeks with the artist, it changes how they think about their work and it also enables them to gain that kind of human perspective on what they're, what they're doing because often they are in the lab and they're very much concentrating on, you know, the cellular experiments, et cetera, et cetera, and, you know, getting that paper published. But having an artist come in who often doesn't know much about the specifics of what they're doing uh, and ask lots of these questions that, you know, people don't normally ask um, and questions which um, are just, you know, they've never heard before. Um, it really does change how they think. But the same with the artist. The artist comes in and um, often they may have a very... Uh, strong picture of what a researcher does um, and it I suppose this helps dispel some of the myths around that because you know the scientist isn't a mad crazy scientist is just a human being who's in the lab and uh, they also gain this uh, wonderful understanding of of what's happening but the sense that the fact that they're spending this time together it does become a collaborative relationship so it just depends on, I suppose, what level of collaboration you're talking about, because they don't actually make an artwork together, as in the researcher doesn't actually physically uh, make the work, but they do feed into the artwork. Um, I think that uh, the, the word entrepreneurship 
conjures up very um, negative images, I think, for a lot of people in the arts. Um, and they would, and artists would, artists and art practitioners would think that this is something that they don't really engage with. But of course, um, really the basic meaning for me of entrepreneurship is just making a living, really, and being able to mind, manage yourself. So um, every art artist, art practitioner has to um, become an entrepreneur. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't think the supports are out there for um, people in the arts, because in 2008, the VAI reported that um, I think it was 80% of artists, visual artists, um, living um, from the earnings of their artwork um, were living below the poverty um, threshold. I suppose that, that's something I really have to think about though, because it's a list of 15 things. But the things that do jump out are um, the ethical and sustainable thinking, um, trying to think about you know, projects and you want them to have some sort of legacy and you want them to have some sort of meaning for people. Otherwise, why are you doing them? Um, for instance, um, the project we did uh, that I, I did with Cleary Conley in Westside um we want that to to have some sort of life um and some sort of effect uh but often we're i'm finding though that actually we need the artists to come back um to actually kind of reinvigorate the project so we're doing that so that um it will have some sort of effect we hope that uh people will, uh, in west side will be more interested in uh, art and science and also the combination of the two and possibly um, have some sort of effect on their um, their community. Um, it's a community that has a high level of unemployment and disadvantage. Um, but obviously there's lots of different things, lots of stacking blocks that need to come together to make things change. Um, uh, working or sorry, learning from experience. Um, that is a, a a thing that um, you find when you leave college that uh, you uh, you've left behind all these wonderful resources that you thought you'd have forever for some reason and then um, you're out and you have you forgot to ask all those questions you forgot to, to or you didn't realize that you should have asked those questions you should have asked uh, your tutors and lecturers about very basic things or you were afraid to ask and that's the thing I think uh, students can have um, a lack of confidence about asking these questions. Like they, they don't want to seem, oh, I, don't, I know this already. Whereas they should just ask these questions because afterwards, it's, oh, sometimes it's too late. Especially if you move away, and it's very hard to go back to your lecture and say, oh, well, actually, how do I do this? Or... Um, I do feel like um, there is an expectation once you're in college that um, uh, you will have your degree show or you'll have your final um, exhibition and then um, it will lead on to the next thing. Or are there, yeah, there's a lack of um, thinking about trying to prepare students for say, where do they first go to look for funding? Do, uh, do they know anything about the funding infrastructure in their local city council? local county council um, and reminding them of actually maybe squirreling away some of those resources that they have while they're in college like you know when you have uh, you have access to all these online journals um, if you can if you should download all the things that you need because you, you find suddenly that you know your email address is gone and your access is gone in I don't know July or maybe September and then you don't have those things anymore or um, there should be just open conversations where maybe um, a tutor or a lecturer sits down with um, students and says, look, um, what do you think, what would you like to know? Um, and then st students ask uh, maybe one-to-one -one tutorials uh, with students about the same thing. Um, and learning, it'd be good if students could be prepared for um, knowing how to identify a good studio 
I know when I left college, I didn't. I went and I paid a huge amount of rent on a studio in Dublin, which uh, didn't do group exhibitions. You didn't meet the other artists. It was a bad studio. But I was so desperate to get a studio that I just picked one that was available. Whereas you should just wait. You should wait for those opportunities. Um, and a conversation, conversation should, be, should be had um, with students about that, I think. Because I find that um, uh, usually it's paid employment first and then all the other projects that you really want to get going come afterwards. And then if you, you're trying to have an arts practice, that comes last, really. So, um, but I would say to um, other practitioners that you have to value your own time because I do find that outside of um, uh, visual arts organisations and um, arts-led initiatives, um, artists can be taken advantage of and they can be asked to do things uh, without any pay. And I would say that um, don't do something unless you're getting something out of it. And it's not always um, payment, but um, like artists often work with artist-led galleries where there's no payment and that's, that, that is a good thing because you are getting something out of it. There's the camaraderie with the other artists, there's opportunities that will come up, but also you're learning all these other skills. But if it's a case where someone says, oh, can you, do, can you just do this because you love, you love painting or you love drawing, that's unfair. And uh, I think they should, they should value their time more. So I think it's hugely important to value your time, even though I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Kerm's, Kerm's Art and Science Pro, uh, Pro, sorry, Kerm's Art and Science Program is marketed in a very certain way um, because we um, are a Science Foundation Ireland funded centre. Uh, our aims must align with their aims. So our aim for art and science projects are to um, create more interest in science um, uh, to increase science literacy. Uh, so that is how it, that is marketed, I suppose. But obviously the, project, the projects are more than that because uh, we work with artists and it's very important to develop their visual research and for them to, um, to get something very, to gain something very meaningful for, from the project. Well, it certainly provides um, a certain framework for the work. Education is absolutely the first one, absolutely key, um, because uh, for me, uh, my practice is, I'm very interested in overlapping practices. So I absolutely have to talk to, I have to learn how to talk to people uh, from different disciplines and. Uh, different practices and um, so I, I studied printmaking in Edinburgh and uh, I uh, ended up concentrating on photography mostly so when I do um, art now I usually do uh, some video and I do photography um, uh, but you probably don't want to include this but since I had kids it's just impossible really uh, to balance it all so um, to be honest most of my time is spent on uh, current work and then I've been trying to do a project since 2017 uh, with uh, the experimental architect uh, Rachel Armstrong the artist Caroline uh, Conley and uh, we got a small Arts, uh, Arts Council grant to meet uh, back in 2017 and I've been looking for funding since but we got some funding last year, uh, sorry this year, through the Goy 2020 um, Moore Institute uh, fund at the university. Uh, so we will actually be coming back together next year. Um, but when we were talking earlier about managing time, unfortunately projects that, um, that uh, 
I'm not working on in Quorum because it's Quorum is my part time job. Um, they very much uh, they don't get as much time, unfortunately. So I guess I'm not very good at balancing my time. Cleary Conley um, are amazing. Um, they are. They have. They're just abs They're amazing artists, and they're lovely people, and they were an absolute joy to work with. So adaptable, and uh, but also so exciting to work with. But they are very successful at going from project to project. But not only um, making um, a way in the world for themselves, but also a very exciting way. And they have exciting project after exciting project. And uh, I just think that they, they for me, they, they really stand out. Like I, I worked with a lot of fantastic artists who are amazing, but it's, it's, um, there are always problems um, trying to find funding. Um, but Anne and Dennis are just amazing at uh, finding ways. And uh, actually part of that is that they're really, they're really excellent at um, making connections and um, uh, communicating ideas and uh, adapting um, the way they talk about projects. So that's understandable to like a very wide audience. They can talk to anyone basically about what they do. So I think to, to me, to me, they, they stand out. This has been the Zimmern Sessions and this has been Andrea Fitzpatrick. Andrea, if people want to find out more information about uh, Curm, what's your website? Uh, the website is www.curmcuramdevices.ie Brilliant, and thanks for joining us on the show today.